Hello, all. Welcome to the ABSN info session. Um, we are starting. Uh, we opened up a little early today, but we are going to give everybody um, a Thanks. few minutes to get in before we get started. So if you need to grab uh, something to drink, a sip of water, we will get started around 7.05 uh, tonight, just to make sure that everybody gets <laughs> time to come in. Um, so if you'd like, um, you can sign in in the chat as you come in. And like I said, we'll get started in about eight minutes or so. Hello, everyone. We are giving everybody a chance to get logged in. So we will be starting in about five minutes. So please, uh, if you need to grab something to drink, a glass of water, um, something like that, we will get started in about five minutes. If you haven't already, just take a moment to sign into the chat and we will go from there. Thank you so much. Okay. Hopefully they don't ask me questions. I think they do that. There you go. I don't know. I don't want him to see me. Why not?
All right. I'm just giving everybody about four more minutes to get logged in before we get started um, here. So again, we will get. Um, we will get started shortly. The meeting is being recorded and it will be posted on our website um, after Thank after you. the session is over. Um, so uh, that will be posted on the CSULA ABSN website. Um, probably sometime early next week. Okay, it's 7.05, so I'm going to go ahead and get started now. Um, thank you all for coming in uh, to the info session today. We're very excited um, to have an opportunity to host this information session for you. We were originally planning to have one last Thursday, and due to some unforeseen circumstances, um, we were unable to hold that info session. So we're really excited that you all were able to come to this info session tonight. Um, my name is Joe Castelli. I am the coordinator of the ABSN, Accelerated Bachelor's of Science in Nursing program here at Cal State LA. I am joined by Jennifer Costadillo, um, who is one of the uh, program coordinators at the College of Professional and Global Education. And we're kind of uh, the team that puts this program together in the background. And so um, we're really excited to talk to you about this program tonight. Um, I will go through the program uh, I have a little slideshow that I'm going to put together should take about 45 minutes or so to get through maybe maybe up to an hour. Um, I do ask that if you have questions, um, that's great. That's part of why we have these things is to answer questions. Um, but unless the question is to clarify a point I'm specifically making on the slide that is a general point um, in, in one of the slides, as opposed to something very specific to you or your circumstance, um, then if that's the case, I do do about 30 minutes to an hour of questions after the information session, and I'm happy to answer individual questions at that time about your specific situation. Um, but during the presentation, if you could just limit your questions to things that are specifically to clarify a point on the slide or anything like that. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions right off the bat before we get started? Uh, Noor, Noor Abdel Hawk. Hello. Hi. Yeah. I was wondering how many of these info sessions you do typically. Um, we typically do two to three per application cycle. Um, so this is our third, um, in during this application cycle. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Well, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen um, and I will start the info session. So let me just start the slideshow here. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. Well, welcome to the uh, info session for the Accelerated Bachelor's of Science in Nursing program here at Cal State LA. Uh, my name is Joe Castley. I am a registered nurse. I am also a faculty member at the Patricia A. Chin School of Nursing. I teach in our 
undergraduate bachelor's of science nursing program. I teach in our accelerated bachelor's of science in nursing program. And I also teach in our associate's degree uh, to bachelor's of science collaborative uh, nursing program. Um, and I'm also the faculty coordinator for the ABSN program. So I'm very excited to, to talk to you about the program tonight. Um, I think it's a wonderful program and I'm excited um, to share it with you all. So um, here we go. So uh, we like to start with a view of Cal State LA, um, both um, because it's a it's a nice view, um, but also because we like to highlight the fact that this is an in-person program. Um, it's one of the things that we're very proud of about the program. Um, it, it, it provides a really quality education um, that is really focused on giving students resources, um, but still man managing to get them through in a very accelerated pace. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the program first. So the program is an ABSN program. It used to be an entry-level master's program, and we transitioned to an accelerated program about eight years ago. And I'll kind of talk a little bit about that um, and why we did that. Um, it is an accelerated pace program for non-RNs who hold a bachelor's degree in any field other than nursing. Um, so really the main uh, requirement for the program is that you do have a degree in a field other than nursing. Um, our entry level to master's program um, started 20 years ago, actually. So this is, you all will be cohort 21 coming into the program. Um, initially, we did have an entry level master's program, but we did end up transitioning to an accelerated bachelor's of science in nursing program. Um, and we really did that for two reasons. The first thing is that the way the entry level master's program works, our students would essentially complete all of the bachelor level coursework they would take the national licensing exam to become RNs. They would become RNs, but then they would stay in school um, for another year, essentially, and get their master's degree at that point in time, um, which although, um, you know, master's degrees, we, we really encourage people to continue their education. Um, there was two challenges with that model. And the first challenge was that a lot of students would get their RN and want to go work, and then they would have to go part-time for their master's or they'd want to take a leave of absence and come back. So we saw that a lot of students weren't actually completing the full track of study the way we had laid it out curricularly. So that's one reason why we shifted to an ABSN. And then the other challenge that we found um, is that occasionally, um, and this happened maybe once or twice, a student would complete the bachelor's portion of the program and they would get their RN license in California. And then for whatever reason, were unable to complete the master's um, degree. They had to move family reasons or whatever, but then they didn't have a degree actually because um, it was only granting them a master's degree. And so if they didn't complete the master's coursework. They were in this weird spot where they had an RN license, but no RN degree to go along with it. Um, and so it made more sense to switch over to the BSN. Um, but it is still possible for an ABSN student to start um, our master's of science in nursing in the family nurse practitioner track immediately after completing the program. So if you are interested in that option, it is still available. Um, it's just not a requirement anymore. Uh, sex successful program completion results in a BSN degree and qualifies the individual to be able to sit for California's registered nurse licensure exam. So the way the NCLEX works, the NCLEX is a national exam. It's a national licensing exam, um, but you apply to each individual board of nursing in each of the 50 states, and they approve your application, which then allows you to sit for the licensing exam. So although all students in all 50 states take the same test, their individual board of nursing is the one who authorizes them. So because we are accredited by the California Board of Registered Nurses, that is who will authorize you to take your nursing exam when you are done. Um, the previous degree de type does not have to be a science-based in order to be successful in this program. This is both according to the research um, and also anecdotally. Um, of the students admitted in summer 2022, 24 um, did not hold a science-based baccalaureate degree. So again, um, significant portion of our cohorts um, oftentimes do not have a science background coming in. So if you're coming in holding a degree in theater or English or business or marketing um, or any of the other wonderful non-science degrees, you will be successful in this program. A um, little bit about our student demographics. Um, we are really proud of our cohorts. We bring in a small cohort, cohort of about 30 students every summer, um, and we really try to pick a cohort that really matches the and, and values of the Patricia H. Chan School of Nursing. Uh, common range for this program usually ranges from the mid-20s to the mid-30s. 
Um, although it is typically a pretty group diverse group, um, gender, race, and age wise, um, we will have students, you know, as young as 21 come into our program who've just finished their bachelor's degree after going straight through um, from high school. And then we'll have students who are in their um, 50s um, who are coming back for their uh, second, third, fourth career. I think we currently have a student who's calling nursing his fourth career um, in the program right now. A lot of our applicants come from uh, local universities. So um, we see a lot of applicants from the UCs, a lot of applicants from the CSUs, but we also have a good deal of private universities um, and we see students both within and outside of California. Majority of our application pool does have previous direct healthcare experience. Um, so I mentioned the NCLEX exam before. It is the national lic licensure exam. Um, nursing, nursing schools tend to be judged for better or for worse by their past results. So how, how well students do on this national licensing exam after they come out of the program. Um, we're pretty proud of our um, NCLEX pass rate and how our students tend to do. Um, I will give you data for the last 13 years. So uh, in the last 13 years, 366 entry-level masters in ABSN students have completed our program. Um, they had a first-time pass rate of 98%, meaning the first time those students attempted the pa the, the exam, they passed. Um, so that's over three, six, 360 students over 13 years. So we're pretty proud of that, those numbers. Um, of the ones who didn't pass on that first rate, um, another six of them passed uh, on a second attempt, and then one more took a third attempt to pass. Um, at the Cal State LA uh, Patricia H. Chan School of Nursing, we do have other nursing programs that we're running kind of concurrently with the ABSN. We have five additional programs. So we have um, the ADN to BSN collaborative program. We also have the RN to BSN uh, program designed for licensed nurses who are transitioning into practice. Um, that program is currently on hold, but we're hoping to run it uh, in 2025. We have a generic BSN program or a traditional BSN. That program runs more of the classic um, three years. It's very closely aligned with the ABSN program. Um, it's just designed for students without that bachelor's degree. We have uh, an MSN program, but that MSN program actually covers about five or six additional options. So we have a family nurse practitioner, an adult uh, gerontological primary care nurse practitioner, a acute uh nurse practitioner and a mental health family and mental health nurse practitioner program, along with a nursing education and nursing administration options. options. We also offer a doctoral level degree in nursing. Um, we are currently part of the uh, SoCal CSU DMP consortium, along with Cal State Long Beach and Cal State Fullerton. Um, that program is in its last year right now, and we will be transitioning to offering a DNP independent of those two other universities, just as those universities are doing as well. Um, we are an accredited program and college and university. Um, we recently received our 10-year reaccreditation from the Commission of Collegiate Nursing Education, along with a five-year um, uh, uh, renewal from the California Board of Registered Nurses, and the university is approved by WASC. All right, so let's talk a little bit about application requirements for the program. So we need a bachelor's degree in a discipline other than nursing, and this has a preferred GPA of 3.0 to 4.0. Um, now note that that is a preferred GPA for undergrad coursework. It is not a, uh, a hard requirement, meaning if your undergraduate GPA is less than 3.0, it will not disqualify you from applying to the program. We do need a minimum GPA of 3.0 or better in the last 90 quarter or 60 semester units of academic work. So that's encompassing any academic work you've done um, we start with the most recent. So if you're taking prerequisites, if you got a master's degree, if you've got a doctor's degree, we'll, we'll go to whatever the most recent coursework was and we'll go backwards in time until we hit 60 semester units. And as long as that is above a 3.0, you will be eligible for the program. We also have several prerequisite requirements for the, our program, specifically four sciences, chemistry, anatomy, physiology, and microbiology. For the four science courses, they must be completed with a B or higher. Um, 
we will talk a little bit more about that, but we only allow for one retake during our, um, our, for our program specifically. Um, meaning if you got less than a B in one of these courses, you do have the opportunity to retake that course and get a better grade. We will then average the two grades from uh, the previous coursework that you've taken. And that will be the grade that is considered during the application process. We also require our students to take the Assessment Technologies Institute or ATI Test of Essential Academic Skills. It is a standardized pre-nursing examination and it is one of the most common screening tests uh, used in nursing schools in California. Likely if you're applying to multiple programs, which I always encourage our students to do, you will uh, more than likely have to take the T's for another program. Um, there are study manuals, manuals available for the TEAS. I always tell my um, students that I'm advising that the TEAS is like the SAT or any standardized test where half the battle is knowing the test. So make sure before you take the TEAS, go to the ATI TEAS website, um, download the testing blueprint, have a good idea of what you're getting yourself into. Um, because it is a pretty comprehensive test, it is a total of 170 multiple choice questions. Time limit for taking the exam is about 209 um, minutes due to the pandemic. Um, they do now offer remote testing and are still offering remote testing for ATI. We accept both remote and in-person tests. Um, you can test, you can schedule them at various colleges, testing centers, and through ATI. Um, the subject areas that ATI covers include reading, um, which includes key ID, ideas and details, craft instructor, integration of knowledge and ideas, math, numbers and algebra, measurement and data, science, human anatomy and physiology, life and physical sciences, and scientific reasoning, English, conventions of standard English, knowledge of language, and vocabulary acquisition. Um, we do require that our applicants um, receive a minimum score of 70th national percentile rank in each of the four content areas. Um, required to be an eligible applicant. And I will show you on a T-score sheet what that looks like. Um, we do only take the T's test. Um, we do only allow one take of the T's test for our program. So if you are applying to multiple schools, some schools will allow you to take the test multiple times. If that's the case, it won't disqualify you from our program, but we will only look at the first attempt for the T's test that you took within our application window. So what our window of time that we will look at or that we consider acceptable for a TEAS test results is a year from when you will be admitted to the program. So that's going to be, we will look at any TEAS scores from June 1 of 2023 through the application deadline of January 9, 2024. We cannot substitute the TEAS test for any other test. So we cannot look at a GRE or a HESI, or any other exam in place of the TEAS test, we only accept the TEAS test. Now, there is more about um, our testing policy and our procedures in our um, application procedure along with our, our FAQs, our ABSN FAQs. So just to show you what I'm talking about for the national percentile rank, you can see here, this is the T score sheet that you will need to upload to Nursing CAS. Again, our application is on Nursing CAS this year. Um, so you can see there is individual scores over here in red and total score over here at the top. What we look at is the individual national percentile rank, which is this red bar on the score sheet. And you'll notice in that reading score, the student got an individual score of 87.2, but that correlated to a 91st percentile rank in the national rankings. And this is what we look at. So looking at this student, you could see the student scored a 68.1 here as their science score. But even though that's less than 70, they would still be eligible for the science score because their national percentile rank was 77%. It's the exact opposite for the English language usage score. Yes, the individual score is over 70, but this percentile rank is less than 70. Therefore, the student would be ineligible for the program. And again, this is the sheet that we need to see um, uploaded to our profile. We do need a previous bachelor's degree. 
Um, and it must be from an accredited school. Essentially, um, most of the uh, universities in the United States that are, are granting bachelor's degrees are accredited, um, as are most of the international institutions. But for the in international institutions, you will need to check in with our international admissions office just to make sure that your institution is, is recognized. Um, it must have been earned by the end of the preceding fall quarter semester at the latest. Essentially, we need you to have completed your bachelor's degree by this fall, uh, by the end of this fall, because we need an official transcript with that degree, showing that degree has been conferred when you submit your application in early January. So if you're still in your coursework and you're not graduating until May, you're not eligible to apply for this cycle. Other things that we need for the application process, um, we do require a two-page essay. It is an open-ended prompt, so there's no specific prompt. When people push me on it, I say, um, really, the prompt is why nursing. Some students take this time to explain to the application committee, you know, I initially pursued a career in this, and now I'm pivoting to nursing because, or some students will say, you know, I've always wanted to be a nurse, and this is um, why this journey made sense for me. Some students will say, um, you know, um, I really want to serve a very specific population, and I think that this is the right route for me to do so. So it's really an opportunity for you to um, let the application committee see more than just the numbers, right? They're going to see your GPA. They're going to see your prereqs GPA. They're going to see your T-score. But the essay is really an opportunity to personalize the application so that they have a better sense of who the, her, the, per, the human is um, behind the application. Two letters of recommendation. Um, they do not need to be on letterhead. Now that we are on nursing CAS, the way the letters of recommendation work is you are going to uh, give nursing CAS the name of two recommenders um, that you would like to have send applications in for you. Um, and you are going to go ahead and um, send those. Uh, uh, you put those into nursing CAS and they will contact your recommenders and then they will upload the letter of recommendation. Um, we do need you to complete all of the prerequisites. Um, so that includes not just the sciences, but also statistics and critical thinking. And then um, we, it's not a requirement. You can apply without healthcare experience, but it is factored into the decision-making process by the application committee. And so um, applicants with healthcare experience tend to be more competitive. Um, the most competitive applicants will be invited for an interview. There's no possible right example. We're not going to do a right example this um, uh, cycle, but we are going to interview. So the way that the interview process works is after we receive all the applications in January, um, the application committee will review all of the applications. And then once they've completed their re review, um, they will identify the top 60 candidates those top 60 candidates will be offered an interview for the program. And then from those top 60, um, the top 30 will be offered admission. And then the remaining 30 will be placed on the wait list or offered a spot on the wait list. Um, uh, just to, one last thing on the interview process. So um, you will be receiving, all eligible applicants will be receiving the option to apply to the university in um, February of 2024. So your initial application is to nursing CAS. That is for the School of Nursing to review the ABSN application committee. Once it clears the ABSN application committee, you will get an invitation from the College of Professional and Global Education, who is the college that administers our program. They will invite you to apply to the university. Um, it you, it has to be done by the end of February. And the reason that's important is that we will invite all eligible candidates um, because the committee will still be scoring candidates at that point in time. Um, and so you could receive an interview invitation up till the last, uh, basically the last, the third week of March um, will be probably the end of the interview process and the end of interview invitations going out, but you'll have to apply to the university to be eligible. So you have to fill out that university application in February if you want to remain an eligible candidate. Can we ask a question at this time? About sure. The prerequisite. Yeah. Thanks. For the prerequisite completion, do you mean that it has to be completed before January 9th for all the prerequisites or before the start of the cycle of the classes? Of you the have to complete the science prerequisites, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, um, 
and chemistry, along with critical thinking and statistics before the application deadline, um, because they those get factored into the um, decision making process. So if those aren't complete, um, then then you technically can't apply to the program and you would be ineligible. Um, there are three additional required courses um, that are just required by graduation, and I'll talk about them in a little bit, um, but those do not have to be completed. But those six courses, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, chemistry, statistics, and critical thinking need to be completed by the time the application is turned in. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay. Let's see here. Um, all right. So additional prerequisite courses beyond those science-based courses. Um, sorry, I, whoops. Um, so we have our science prerequisite courses, anatomy and physiology, four semester units, chemistry, four semester units, microbiology, four semester units. I should point out that anatomy and physiology are each four semester units. Now you can take either individual human anatomy and individual human physiology or a combined anatomy and physio one and anatomy and physio two, both are acceptable. Just the combined total number of units for your anatomy and physiology coursework need to be at least eight semester units. Um, all sciences must have a lab component and sciences with lab courses must be completed by the end of the preceding fall quarter or semester. Additional course prerequisite. So we need the critical thinking and the stats to also be completed by the time the application is turned in in January. Um, there are three additional courses that are required for gra graduation, but will not make you ineligible for the program if they are not completed. Those are developmental or lifespan psychology. Um, a human development course will also fulfill this requirement. Intro to sociology or cultural anthropology and human nutrition. All of these courses must be completed with a C and they must be completed by the time you graduate. The problem is you cannot take them during the ABSN program and you cannot take them through Cal State LA. So we highly recommend that you either complete these courses ahead of time or if you haven't completed them yet, we recommend you trying to take them during your spring semester while you're applying to the program because it will become really challenging if we get into... Um, the program and you're trying to take these courses because you'll likely need to take them at a community college. All right. Uh, any remaining non-science prerequisite courses must be completed during the winter intercession at the latest. Um, and if you're really if you're really stuck on critical thinking and statistics, you can email me and I can usually grant you a small extension on that if you need a few extra weeks. Um, Prerequisite courses can be taken a maximum of two times. The grades from each of the two course attempts will be averaged. I did go over this a little earlier, but I do want to highlight there. Um, we are accepting courses taken online. So if you took your courses online, as long as they had lab components and they don't have to be in-person lab components, but just any type of a lab component, we are accepting uh, online courses and online labs. Um, so that's basically the application process. I know people tend to have a couple more um, questions about it. Um, I will happily answer those after we complete the presentation. If you have more kind of questions about the application and how that works, it is on nursing CAS this year. So you are applying through nursing CAS. That is the application you need to have turned in by January 9th. Um, Janelle raised her hand. It looks like. Yes, hi, thank you. Um, I just had a quick question on do any of the prerequisite courses expire? No, that's a great question. Um, thank you. We have no recency requirements for our program. So uh, what that means is that if you took the course four months ago or 40 years ago, we will look at the course the same way. Um, and so for some applicants, that's great because you took a course a really long time ago and you don't want to retake it. We will still um, except that course, but it also means that if you took a course 20 years ago and didn't do so well on it, we're going to consider that as part of the process as well. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay, so uh, the curriculum. Oh, Ivan. Hi, um, I just got a quick question about the prerequisites. So um, I'm trying to, uh, I'm taking this prerequisites at a community college. 
and mm -hmm. I have like um some problems deciding because uh these prerequisites are offered at the community college, but they also have some like uh it's called general ed. So um like do you only require the prerequisites as a course itself, or you also require the like general ed um like the prerequisites, or you only require the courses only? We only require those six courses. So because you have a previous bachelor's degree, we do not need any of the general education requirements. We don't need you to be GE certified. We don't need any additional electives because all of that was covered in your first bachelor's degree. So all we require for our program are the nursing prerequisites, which are anatomy, physiology, microbiology, chemistry, statistics, and critical thinking. That's what you have to have completed to apply those six. And then additionally, we need nutrition, lifespan, de uh, human development or lifespan psychology, and then culture anthropology or sociology. Those additional three cor courses are required for graduation. So what you mean is that I can only do these courses and only get a transcript from the junior college, uh, mentioning I've done these courses and my grades and that's it, right? What do you mean? I'm sorry. I mean, I, I can only do these courses, the prerequisites, and then get a transcript from the co for, like from the community college, uh, stating the courses I've done and the scores I've gotten, and that's okay. So your transcript will cover any coursework you've ever taken. There's no way to exclude anything from your transcripts. But yeah. yes, you only need the six prerequisites to be eligible for the program. Oh, okay, all right, I get it. Cause like why why I'm asking this question is like um the community college which I'm attending was asking me that I can't get a degree from them if I don't do general ed courses. Okay, so they were like, you have to confirm with your school whether they need general ed or they don't need it. Because um if I don't do general ed, I cannot get a degree or like a, uh like an associate from them. So I they can I I can do the courses, but I won't get any kind of qualification from them. But and give me a transcript for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, you don't need an associate's degree for our program. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, Shani Ashley Frankion. Sorry. Okay, Frankion. <laughs> thank you for trying. Um, hi. Thank you for doing this tonight. I'm very appreciative. Sure. Um, I spoke to you during the summer because um, I took anatomy and physiology at Hofstra University and mm -hmm. that was about five years ago. And at the time it was three credits. So last time we spoke, you were like, okay, just make sure you take an anatomy course. So that way um, you can bump up the credits. So I just wanted to confirm because right now I'm taking anatomy and that's at LACC and that's four credits. So that would make me have, what is that? Like 10 credits altogether of anatomy. So is that still okay? Yes, that's okay. All right. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, Nasus, and then is uh, what's your question? Yes, uh, I have a question about uh, the personal essay. Is there a <laughs> maximum number of words that we can write? Does it have to be double spaced? Um, we ask for it to be two pages double spaced. Um, we're not going to ding you heavily on formatting. So if it ends up being one and a half spaces or 1.8 spaces, the application committee will still consider the essay. But, um, you know, they are humans and they are humans who are reading your essay subjectively. So if you send in an essay with like seven point font, it's not likely not going to go over very well. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Um. Aggie? Um, yeah, hi. Sorry, I had a question regarding um, international uh, degrees. So if we've got it, like, and it's also been um, evaluated by Wes and like it's uh, equal to, um, a, let's say, bachelor's degree in the US. So yeah. how would that work? Perfect. Um, yeah, so if you have an international degree, exactly what you just stated is exactly what needs to happen. So you have to have your degree evaluated by a credit evaluation service because that um, we need to be able to a um, see that the coursework you took in another country at another institution is equivalent to a bachelor's degree because you need to have at least a bachelor's degree um, in order to be eligible for the program. 
Then beyond that, if there's any coursework that you took in your international program that we could potentially utilize as a prerequisite, we have to have that credentialing service evaluated so they can give us the equivalency as far as credit units are concerned, and then also the equivalency as far as grades are concerned. Um, so you want to do that. But then you have one more additional step before you get to the School of Nursing, which is you do need to contact the International Admissions Department at Cal State LA, and they have to approve the degree. So they basically have to approve um, the institution and the degree. Um, once you've done that, you essentially apply to the program like any other applicant would. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, all right, there's a lot of questions. Um, I'm going to hold off on any more questions until um, we get through the curriculum. Um, so please hold your questions and then I will come back and answer all of your questions. Okay, so the ABSN curriculum um, is uh, pre-licensure content is covered in 15 months. And this is important because you're essentially signing up for the same exact curriculum that the traditional bachelor's of science and nursing students take in three years over 15 months. And I cannot say that enough times because no matter how many times I say it, people are always shocked at how fast paced and rigorous the curriculum is. It's because you're doing the same amount of curriculum that most people do in 36 months in 15 months. So you're doing it in less than half the time that it's gonna equal a rigorous and fast paced experience. Um, it is the same exact, exact coursework. And so you can anticipate that you're going to be doing essentially double the work. Um, rigorous schedule of theory and clinical courses uh, being taught concurrently. Students start in the hospital about halfway through their first summer of the program. Um, you're going to do a combination of clinical rotations, practicums, which are nine to 12 hours in length in the skills lab and physical lab or in hospital-based settings. Though I like to tell students what you can budget for time-wise for this program is you can anticipate every semester you will have two days of lecture courses. Those two days of lecture courses will typically be, be between four and eight hours per day. Um, and then you can also anticipate two days of clinical, and those clinicals will be nine to 12 hour days. More than likely, they will be 12 hour days. There is only two rotations that have nine hour days in them. The rest are 12. So you're committing to four in-person days when you commit to this program a week, and those days are non-negotiable, especially the clinical days. The clinical days you are required to be present for, um, and so... I just want to put that out there as people are thinking about how you're going to budget time um, and, and create opportunity uh, for yourself to be successful in this program. Um, all right, so let's go over the roadmap for the program really quickly, talk about some of the coursework um, that's going to be offered. So um, first summer session, it's 10 weeks. Um, you will be taking Fundamentals of Nursing, which is a lecture course. You will also be taking the clinical component to that course. Um, that is an in-hospital course. So it will start off in our skills lab, but then by week five, it will move into a hospital-based setting. Uh, 3280, which is a pathophysiology course, a uh, lecture course, 3620 health assessment, which is a lecture course. And that also has a practicum component as well. Um, that requires three hours a week in our physical assessment lab. In the fall semester, um, so this would be fall of 2024 for you all, um, you take a lecture course, Nursing Care of Adults, which is our medical surgical nursing lecture course, um, 3230, which is the accompanying practicum or hospital-based clinical experience for that course. You're also taking the lecture course, Psychiatric Nursing, along with the hospital-based clinical course, Practicum Psychiatric Nursing. You are taking two additional clinical courses, which include nursing research and nursing care management of clients, nursing, and the healthcare system. There is a brief course during winter intercession, and it is pharmacology. It is a lecture-based course. Then the following spring semester, which would be spring of 2025, you will take Nurse 3260, Nursing Care of Children, Nurse 3270, Practicum Nursing Care of Children, Nurse 3240, Nursing Care of Women and Infants, the lecture, and then the hospital-based clinical, Nurse 3250, Practicum Nursing Care of Women and Infants, then the lecture course, Advanced Nursing and Leadership Concepts, 
This course is a lecture and it is our advanced med surge course. It also includes nursing 4450, which is the clinical based practicum for that course. In the final summer, summer of 2025, you will take community health nursing and the accompanying practicum, uh, clinical-based community health nursing. This does make you eligible to receive a public health nursing certificate once you receive your bachelor's of science in nursing and are um, licensed by the Board of Nursing in California. And then we have our advanced cooperative education course, which is a combination of seminar, um, which does offer some NCLEX prep along with transition to practice content. And then there is a preceptorship attached to that advanced cooperative education, which is like an apprenticeship with a nurse in a hospital. Um, we do use a lot of different community partners for our hospital sites. Um, some of the more recent ones we've used include Cedar sinai Children's Hospital LA, Huntington Hospital, Keck USC, uh, multiple Kaiser hospitals, uh, LAC USC, currently named LA General, LA Downtown Medical Center, and Adventist Health White Memorial. Um, we do require, not for application, but once you get into the program, um, that you do some significant health clearance. Um, this is not a university requirement. This is required by our hospital partners. The challenge is you cannot, as you receive a minimum number of in-hospital hours, um, we do not pay these hospitals. These hospitals donate this time and their sites. And so if you are not able to meet their health clearance requirements, um, it will delay your 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 progress through the program, um, and it can potentially mean you won't be able to complete the program because, again, you cannot become licensed um, unless you complete these clinical hours, and you can only complete these clinical hours in hospitals. Um, so we do require the MMR uh, and varicella. We need to see proof of vaccination and titers um, for those. Hepatitis B, proof of vaccine series, and titers. You do need to show proof of vaccination for the Tdap within the last 10 years. We do require a initial two-step TB skin test followed by an annual TB skin test. Uh, the flu vaccine is an annual requirement during flu season from October through April. Um, you may be required to get fit test certified. Um, it do, we do require a urine drug screen. Um, we are requiring the COVID-19 vaccine and booster. Um, it is required by most hospitals. Most hospitals are okay with students having gotten a two-step or one-step vaccine along with a booster, but some hospitals are requiring the most current boosters. So just so you're aware of that, um, there may be certain sites that are going to require you to get um, boosted again. We do do a background check as part of the process. We also provide CPR certification, or we also require CPR certification from the American Heart Association um, for the BLS life support healthcare provider, um, a driver's license and proof of auto insurance, a recent proof of health insurance and physical exam. And all of these requirements are subject to change and update by our clinical partners. Um, talk a little bit about cost of the program. So uh, the pre-licensure BSN portion of the program is offered through the College of Professional and Global Education. Um, tuition fees are established by PAGE. PAGE is a wonderful partner and we've been working with them for the full 20 years of our program. The reason why the um, program is administered through the College of Professional Global Education is because it is an extension college and this is an extension program because all of our applicants have already received bachelor's degrees. The state of California does not subsidize our program in any way. It is a completely self-support program, meaning that it is entirely paid for with student tuition. Um, the current tuition cost for the 15-month ABSN program is set at $595 per unit. And it equals approximately $32,000 um, for tuition for the program. Now, there are some additional costs, and I'll talk about them in a little bit. But one of the reasons why I point out that we are an extension um, program and that we are administered through that um, professional College of Professional and Global Education is because there are some grants and waivers that are done through the state of California. And because they do not subsidize our programs, we are not eligible for those waivers. And those include the Cal Vet fee waiver, um, which would only waive mandated fees. The self-support extension fees are not waived. Therefore, the Cal Vet beef waiver cannot be used for any programs such as the ABSN or any courses offered by the College of Professional Global Education. 
some of the additional costs one can expect um, about two thousand dollars in books um the uh testing software that is used and this will be ati or hesse for you all um it is unclear yet exactly what we will be using um there is a lab fee that is paid to the skills lab and it does cover the nursing backpack uh it also covers nursing uniforms at uh, or no, you need to cover nursing uniforms, which usually run about $70 per set. We recommend two of those. You also are required to purchase a lab coat and a student nurse ID. Um, you do need to get a background check and the Castle Branch program, which is where you will store your health requirements. Um, we do require malpractice insurance. It's offered through the university at $20 annually. You are required to take a fire class, the LA Fire safety class that gets you the blue LA city fire car. Some of our sites do require parking. And of course the university requires parking. So you can anticipate about $750 of parking during the program, student health center fee of 138 per semester, university student union fee of 137 per semester, a uh, live scan fee associated with the um, application to the BRN the graduation fee, and then the application fee to the Board of Nursing. Um, all of that ends up totaling about $37,000. So we recommend that students um, anticipate a financial cost of $37,000 total for the program. Uh, there is, like we said earlier, an option to apply to the MSN program directly after the ABSM. So students in the ABSN program can apply to our MSN Family Nurse Practitioner Program during their spring semester. Um, and essentially they are uh, not guaranteed, they go through the application process, but essentially the, the uh, MSN program waives the requirement that you have a registered nurse's license to apply. As a result of that, um, you are eligible to apply um, to the program and uh, you, um, you could go directly in and essentially you start as soon as the program is um is is finished you have about a week off and then you're jumping right into that next program this program is offered through stateside therefore the tuition is at the current cal state la full-time graduation student rate of approximately seven thousand six hundred per year okay um Graduate program options, um, there are a bunch of different ones. So like I said before, we have an adult gerontology, primary care nurse practitioner, adult gerontology, acute care nurse practitioner, a family practice nurse practitioner, and a family psychiatric mental health nurse practice practitioner, nursing administration, and nursing education. Again, all of the programs except for the FMP do require some experience as an RN in order to be eligible. So what you would be eligible to apply for is that um, F, uh, the family psychiatric, I mean, the family nurse practitioner program, excuse me. Uh, here is our ABSN webpage. Everything I've covered tonight, along with much, much, much more information is available on that webpage. If you have not had a chance to review it, you really should. Um, some other helpful websites, calstatela.edu, especially if you're looking for that international office, there you go. Um, assist.org is helpful if you're looking for um, which courses from local community colleges transfer to universities. It only will show you community college to university, but it is helpful. And then we do recommend for people looking for um, direct patient care experience. It's probably a little late in the game to get it right now. But if you are thinking about summer 2025 as an application cycle, the Cope Health Scholars program is a wonderful way to get some direct patient care experience. Um, I do like to end here with some employment data. So of our students who graduated in 2022, um, 20 of 30 found RN employment within four months, 28 of 30 found RN employment within six months, and all were employed within 12 months of graduation. Uh, all 30 ended up being hired as hospital-based staff RNs. Uh, I thank you so much for participating in today's uh, Cal State LA ABSN information session. If you are interested in scheduling a future um, ABSN advisement appointment, or if you have any questions, you can email uh, me at ABSN underscore advisement at calstatela.edu. We do not do scheduled um, appointments. What we do now is we have a drop-in um, that occurs on Fridays. It won't occur this Friday, but it is now on Fridays from 1 to 4.30. Um, 
and it is an open Zoom room. It's as if there was an advisement office on campus that you can show up to. You wait in line, you wait in the waiting room, and an advisor will call students in one at a time, and they can answer individualized questions that you may have about the program. You can also email us at absn underscore advisement, and we will um, try to get back to your request in a timely fashion. Um, at this point in time, I will um, open up the... Uh, open up the uh, questions. So uh, first person I see is Sandra. Sandra, go ahead. Hi, I just had a question again about classes after your bachelor's. Um, uh -huh. So I've taken classes like medical terminology, like political science, things I didn't take for my bachelor's. Do those also count towards the last 60 units, even though they're not prerequisites? Yes, any coursework you've taken, um, counts towards those last 60 units. So, Thank you. yep, absolutely. Uh, Dulce Lopez. Yes, hi. I just want to say thank you for taking your time to Zoom in at 7 p.m. and it's a little late. But um, my question is, when you sub when I submit my application, does the committee look at it as a whole or does certain parts weigh more than others? Um, there is, th they do use a rubric when they're evaluating um, the application, but they do try to, there is some space within that uh, rubric for kind of a holistic review of the candidate. So um, that is to say that, you know, the GPAs are weighted and the scores are weighted, but your essay is also weighted and your letters of recommendation are weighted and your experience is weighted. So um, there is there is a rubric that is used, um, but uh, it's pretty evenly weighted between the different categories. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, uh, Arunima, I might have blown that. No, that's okay. It's Arunima. Um, hi, Mr. Castley. Thank you um, for answering your questions. My sure. question is about the chemistry prerequisite. So when it says uh, you have to have a grade of a B in quotes, does that mean a B minus B or a B plus, or does it mean it has to be a B and higher? The GPA has to be a 3.0 or higher. So technically a B, a B minus would not. Um, would not count. So the GPA, um, I whatever mean, the, yeah, whatever the, cause some colleges use the plus or minus system. So I see. yeah, we said it, it would have a, to be okay. Higher than B, a three or um, higher. Yeah. And then really quickly. So if it is a B minus, but then I have an additional semester of chemistry after that. Um, and that was like a C plus. And then I also have biochemistry. Um, do you think I would still need to, you know, I guess, make up that chem course to get a B if it's not meeting the 3.0 requirement or will you sort of look at, you know, all the other chemistry courses and sort of, you know, make we it can, If you have a significant amount of chemistry coursework, we can look at the additional chemistry coursework. And if there, we can't, we can't take organic chemistry or biochemistry, but that if there are other chemistry coursework and some of that is higher than a B minus, we could combine multiple chemistry courses together to get us above that B. Got it. And sorry, just one more follow up. If it's, you know, I mean, based on all this, we still find that it's not meeting, um, you know, the 3.0 requirement for chemistry. I know you said all the science prerequisites you have to have done by the end of you know this fall. Yeah. Would you make an exception and sort of say, Conditionally, we would accept you if you took it starting spring and had it done before, you know, the start of the program. We can't make that exception because you need it's required that you have these prerequisites completed at a B or better to be admitted into the program. And so if we made that exception and you got granted admission in March, but for whatever reason you didn't get that B plus or better to average it out by that time, um, then you wouldn't be eligible for the program and we potentially would lose a spot um, for an eligible student. So it, it, we require, that is why that requirement is in place that everything be done by the deadline. Okay, got it, thank you. Sure. Uh, Jayla. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Jayla. Jayla, sorry. No, it's okay. So I do have two questions. My first question is, if the introduction chemistry is acceptable for the chemistry prerequisite or does it have to be general chemistry? It 
Did you say introductory versus general? Yes. So it, both are acceptable. The, the For the chemistry, it has to be four units. It has to be with lab and it has to be um, kind of like base basic chemistry. Um, so meaning not organic and not biochemistry. So it's, you know, studies, studies of gases, studies of um, acid base balance, um, study, study of fluid, that, that, that type of chemistry, but intro general, um, both are acceptable. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then for my second question is if I'm applying for the secondary bachelor program, is the deadline for Cal State apply November 30th? For... Your for the traditional program? Yeah, so to apply for the schools, I was wondering if the deadline was November 30th, because I know you mentioned February, the end of February. Oh yeah. So um for our program specifically for the ABSN. Now I don't I don't know anything about the traditional application requirements. So nothing, you know, you should nothing I say here applies to that program. It's a separate program. Um, but for the ABSN program. The nursing CAS application is due January 9th. Then there's a separate CSU apply window that opens up in February. And that is from February 1 to Feb 28. And we will email individual eligible candidates um, essentially with information about that window. So you do not need to apply to the university right now. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. No problem. Um, let's see. Uh, Shaney. Yes. So I have a question. Um, two questions. If you have a low T scores but a high GPA, can you still get in? And then my second question is, if you don't get into the ABSN, could you apply for the ADN two BSN? Great question. Okay. So, um. If your T scores are low, but above that 70th percentile, um, you absolutely can still get admitted. Um, the, the application committee attempts to look at each applicant um, holistically, meaning they're not just looking at your ac academic scores. So um, if, as long as you're above that 70th percentile in all four categories for the T's, you will still, your application will still be reviewed and and you, you're still eligible and you still have a good chance of getting in. Um, if you, don't get into the ABSN and are interested in the ADN to BSN, you absolutely would be eligible. The way that program specifically works is, um, and you should check out that website for the ADN to BSN program um, on the College of Professional Global Education, because essentially you need to be admitted to one of the 13 community colleges that we work with. And once you are admitted to one of those 13 community colleges, we work directly with the community college to identify interested candidates and and move them forward with the application process. So it's sort of a different process to get in the ADN to BSN, but it does not impact, applying to the ABSN does not impact your um, chances of getting into or eligibility for any of the other programs. What was the website that you said to look into? Um, if you just type in ADN to BSN, CSULA, it should take you to that webpage. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, Stephanie. Hi, um, I have a few questions, just three questions. I'll be quick though. Um, I'm no. currently in my last semester at Cal State LA and no. I know you will be finishing around December 15th. I was wondering, um, in order to get an official transcript, I know sometimes it takes a little while. If I wouldn't receive one by January 9th, would I be able to submit an unofficial transcript? And then, okay. Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. We would take an unofficial transcript in that case. Um, and then you would just send us in an updated official transcript once you got the degree officially conferred. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And then um, for the T's exam, also, I know our deadlines, um, January 9th. Do, do you know if it takes a few days to um, get the results or is it right away? My understanding is it's almost immediate and you don't need to submit the results to the school. You just need to be able to download that page I showed in the PowerPoint and submit it to nursing CAS. So I believe that, you know, I wouldn't recommend taking it Jan 9th, but I believe you could take it Jan 9th, get your scores and, and, and upload them. 
Perfect. Okay, thank you. And then my last question, sorry, um, for the letters of recommendation, so they're no longer company letterhead, you said that we have to sub um, submit their information, and then you guys give them the letter, correct? Yes, exactly. So they're still writing like a formal letter of recommendation. So if they, if your recommenders are already working on something, that's great. It's just that they now, instead of, you used to have to mail the letter in with your application, but now they can just submit, they submit the letter through nursing CAS. So you just want to tell your recommenders to look out for that email because that's how they will submit it. Got it. So they could already have it written out and then just be ready to send it to you guys. Yep, exactly. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, Shelby. Hi, uh, I'll get my bachelor's degree outside uh, USA. I wondering, except the WES evaluation, uh, do I need to send the official organic transcript to CSULA? Yeah, so um, you will need to send an official copy of the credit evaluation along with the official transcript as part of the um both the nursing CS process and the um, uh, uh, official university application process later on in the spring. Okay, so I need both the WES and my official. Okay, yes. and uh, my other question is, what's the minimum scores of uh, Doningo for the in English language preference? Oh, for the the to the TOEFL the T O E F L. Score? Uh the TOEFL or uh, Doningo. I'm I'm not sure. That would be a question for the um international admissions office. Um, I believe in our FAQs uh, we have ident we we've identified the scores, but I don't know them off the top of my head. So I would recommend going to our website, looking at our frequently asked questions because I've got the verbiage from the uh, office of international admissions as far as the TOEFL requirement goes. Okay. Uh, when I uh saw the website, well, I'm uh undergraduate students or a graduate student. You're considered an undergraduate student or a second back student. Second bachelor student. Okay, graduate. Thank you. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Heather Mendoza. Heather Mendoza. Okay, Cindy Phoenix. Hi, um, I was just going to ask, when we uh, submit our application to CAS, um, where do we send our official transcripts? Is it to the nursing department or to the admissions office at Cal State LA? You actually send them into CAS, and CAS has information on the website about how to do that, and they can accept both electronic and um, paper official transcripts. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I was going to ask um, CAS, I haven't heard of that. It is online on the official website for Cal State LA for the ABSN program? No, so the way that, uh, here, um, let me... Okay, so uh, let me share my screen here. So um, nursing CAS is uh, it is a uh, centralized application for a nursing program. So it allows you to apply to multiple nursing schools with a single application. Um, so that is beneficial um, because multiple, you know, if you are applying to multiple programs, um, a couple of them will likely be using nursing CAS. Um, you essentially get started. You would um, essentially sign in or log in and then it will walk you through the process. Um, so this is really what you're going to do. So you go to apply now. Um, it is going to ask you which term. You're applying for summer 24. You hit apply. And it's going to take you through the process. And so you essentially from there, sign into your account. It's probably going to get grumpy with me because I need a new... Uh, Oh, and there you just fill you fill out your application here. So you'll do anything here. You're going to add the program you're looking for. So 
Um, depending on what you're looking for, you can see uh, California State University, Bakersfield, East Bay, Los Angeles. So what you're looking for is this ABSN program. And essentially that's what you're going to click on and you would add it. It's going to give you the information about what you need. And then you go ahead and you fill out your um, program. So you've got the ABSN there. It talks to you about the program description. You go through your application, you fill out the information here, and then you submit your application when you're ready to. Thank you so much. And then the other thing, um, I don't know if I heard correct, our national score has to be 70% and above on each four, on the four categories, correct? Correct. And now if our GPA exceeds, like if we, I, I think someone asked this, if someone, if we have a good GPA, but our percentile rank, rank falls just below 70, but our overall score is over 70, are we still allowed to apply or no? Um, I'd have to look that the eligibility requirement is 70th percentile or better. Okay. Um, but if you want to email me offhand, I can take a look for you. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, Amy Ramos. Hi, um, I had a couple of questions really quick. So in terms of the inferential stats class, if I took a sociology elementary stats course and an intermediate stats course, both sociology courses, would those still apply for that one? Absolutely. We will take statistics from any discipline, as long as it's three units and it's the statistics course, whether it's um, psychology, statistics, sociology, statistics, business statistics, it, it, it's as long as it's an inferential statistics or a statistics course, three units or better, and you passed it with a C, we'll take it. Okay. And then my next question for the human growth and development and the human nutrition classes, um, since would those be inclu included in the application um, for the transcript entry if we sign up for them, say for like the winter course or spring? Yeah, so the in the nursing CIS application, it does ask you for those courses. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't have them, it will not count against your application. Um, but if you have them, it helps us to see that you have them done already. So that way we can make a note that those are already completed, but it doesn't get factored into the application process. So if you're taking them over the winter, you could put that you're putting them in and then winter, and then you just put grade pending or whatever, whatever it says there. Okay. And then uh, my last question, just to confirm, the TEAS exam can be done remotely as in the one that we can do at home with the proctor? Absolutely. Yes. You can self-proctor yourself. You can do that remote proctoring through um, ATITs. That's absolutely acceptable. We will accept it. The only thing I tell students is that I have heard that it's a stressful experience because essentially ATI makes you responsible for all of the technical side of things. So your internet has to be steady. You know, you have to be logged onto the white right side. You have to have a computer that's able to run whatever their proctoring thing mm -hmm. is. You need a mm -hmm. webcam. So if you're cool with all that, then absolutely we will accept the thing. Um, I just I've heard horror stories from applicants about, you know, the, the, the internet goes out and I had to like run to Starbucks because ATI wouldn't, you know, reset the test or whatever. And so just, just so you're aware. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Paul. Hi, good evening. Thanks for doing this. I just have three questions. Sure. Um, what's the yeah. possible timeline for completing the MSN coming straight out of the accelerated program? What's a typical, is it a full-time uh, timeline to finish it within like two years? Yeah, I don't believe that they offer part-time options in the MSN program. I, I don't teach in it, so I'm not that familiar with it. But um, yes, it's a two-year program. And the, the, the FMP program um, essentially starts the fall after you graduate from the ABSN. So you graduate like August 12th and you would start your MSN like August 22nd or something like that. Um, and then it is a um, full-time two-year program and the FMP does do one summer as well. So you would do fall, spring, summer, fall, spring, graduate for the MSN. Okay, cool. And then I don't have all of my uh, prerequisite science classes complete until the end of next fall. Uh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the end of next spring. But um, I'm wondering, can I send my unofficial current transcripts from my previous degrees um, to you guys to assess what is um, 
checked off for all the prerequisites to see if they apply to everything. So I know like sort of a, a view of what I need to take in order to be complete to apply for the 2025 cycle. Yes, absolutely. You can send those into that ABSN underscore advisement at calstatela.edu and we can review prerequisites there. We can also uh, um, we can also review prerequisites and unofficial transcripts at the drop-in advisement session. So if you want to show up to one of those, we could do it there as well. And then one last question is how many people typically apply per cycle? Sure. Uh, 200 to 250. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, and then I know that people are putting questions in the chat. I will check the chat after I get through all the raised hands, but I just have to pick a system and that's the system. Uh, Carla, how can I help you? Carla Hearn. Um, yes. Yes. Hello. Sorry. Hello. So I had two questions. So the first one would be, so I know you mentioned like if you retake a course, you guys get the average for that to, to get that 3.0 average, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's say you took general chemistry initially at, you know, your primary school. And then when you retook it, you took introductory chemistry. Does that, is that going to count as the equivalent where you'd get the average from those two courses or because they're titled differently, you just get whatever is better? No. Um, if, if the course would be accepted as a prerequisite, then it counts. Even if, you know, at one college, it's intro chemistry at general and another college is general chemistry. If they're both four unit chemistry classes and they both included a lab and they both cover the kind of those same um, subject matter, then they would be considered as equivalent and we would average the two courses. Okay, got it. And then um, my second question was, so I know you guys asked for statistics, right? And you said it, as long as it's a C or better, but let's say you're going to take it in the winter which means that that would finish in February or so, would we submit our updated grade if it's better than the previous grade? You can, but as long as you've got stats done at a C or better, it stats and critical thinking, th those grades don't factor into the application. So there's no benefit to you. Okay, I see. Got it. And yeah, the only, the only GPA that they're looking at is the science GPAs. They're not looking at the stats or the critical okay. thinking. Got it. So the science GPAs. So then I'm going to expose my grades right now. So, cause I'm, I'm wondering where I would stand. Get me. Cause even I think if I were to, so let's say the first time I took it, right. It's divided into two, into two of the lab and the class and together that's five units. Right. So the first time I took it, I failed the class itself. And then I got a C minus in the lab. Right. So then I retook the class itself, but not the lab. And I got a D. So then years later, I went back to school and then mm -hmm. I took the introductory and I got a B there and that's a four unit. So that's why I yeah. wonder like, where does the average play out? Because I'm pretty sure even if I were to retake it and pull off an A, I'm pretty sure my average wouldn't even meet that to do point oh. So yeah, I, I Carla, what I would recommend is uh, email me at ABSN advisement um, at calstatela.edu um, and then send me in that email, say what you just said, but also send me transcripts so I can look at the courses, um, the descriptions and the uh, units. Um, we generally try to make candidates eligible if we can. We're not trying to weed you out, but um, I would have to look at the individual courses to kind of give you an answer on that one. So I'm going to toss my email in the chat and just send me an email. Um, okay. And I'll be able to answer that more, more appropriately at that. Okay, that makes sense. Perfect. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, Lindsay Straz. Thanks for all the information. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. You were a little gl glitchy at first, but then you came together. Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, so I have my bachelor's from a private institution. What is the route for getting petitions for prereqs I've already taken? I did a year of pre-med and undergrad. Um, yeah. So that it's, it's, it's real simple. Okay. The main thing is minimum units. So if you took a chemistry class and it is four units or better and it included a lab and it, the, the description matches or is close to the description on the Cal State LA website, we will accept the course. 
But the biggest thing is it has to be completed with a B and it has to be four semester units. I'm, I'm, you can email that uh, APSN underscore advisement and have me um, look at individual unofficial transcripts that you send me. But really that's the category, that's the key. So like if your human anatomy course was a three unit course, it will not be accepted. But if it's a four unit course or better and it's human anatomy, even if the title is slightly different, as long as it's a human anatomy course, it will be accepted. Okay, so you guys don't require like a petition form specifically. I'm able to send you the transcript and then you'll look at that. Yes, you can send me the transcript. If there's something that's like, fuzzy like you know you said you were pre-med or maybe you started medicine like if if the content is buried in a course somewhere then we might need syllabi and things like that but as long as they're pretty straightforward like this is an anatomy course this is a physiology course this is a microbiology course as long as they meet the minimum unit requirement they will they will be accepted for transfer perfect and then my second question is um the link on the cal state la website it says that the like the link is forthcoming for the cas website is the website you shared the one that we should go on specifically yes yes okay yeah you go to nursing cas and then you create a profile and start an application and then you just select our program so that it knows that that's where you'd like to send it and you can pick multiple programs so if like you're doing san francisco states as well or or somebody else who uses nursing cas you can you can do those simultaneously okay and then i just have one more question um sure. If so, I'm completing stats during the winter. Um, it's January to February, like 20th, and then I'm doing critical thinking at the same time. Am I still able to apply if those courses are kind of hovering that deadline? Um, get, send me a specific email with when the course will be completed. Um, okay. and li likely I can give you an extension or an exception, but what, what, okay. how to work? Send me the information, I'll review it, and then I will email you saying, yes, this is okay for you to be in process with this stats course. And then you will submit that as part of your application. So that way it. when it gets screened, it, it's been pre-approved that you're okay. And they won't just like kick you to the ineligible pile. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ivan. Hi, um, I wanted to about the BSN and ADA program that you talked about. The ADN to BSN? When it comes to like the, uh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry, which program are you asking me about? I'm sorry, I missed it. The, the ADN and the BSN program that you talked about. Okay. When someone asked you some question. Yeah. Um, college and I do the prerequisite do those prerequisites up to both the ADN and the BSN yeah and so like does that reduce like the time for the BSM um so if, if I'm understanding correctly your question is do the prerequisites that you're taking for the ABSN also count for like an ADN program as well um, and if that's what you're asking, yes, generally speaking, um, in California, most nursing programs require very similar, if not the same prerequisites. Um, so you would need to, um, so yes, so anything you're taking for our program would also make you eligible for like an ADN program or a traditional BSN or any other ABSN program for the most part. Is that, does that answer your question? Yeah, but like for the BSN program, if uh -huh. I do its prerequisites, so be a program, or it would be like less time. If you do like the anatomy, biology, and stuff like that, will the BSN still be four years or like three years? I'm sorry, I'm you're breaking up a little bit, so I'm not fully understanding your question. Um. I think you're asking, are you asking if you do the ADN to BSN pathway? No, I'm like, if I go to like a community college yes, and I do the prerequisite, uh -huh. 
the physiology and the gen the the nursing prerequisites and general ed. Will that reduce my time when I'm doing the BSN? Uh, no, not for our program. Maybe for a different program, but for our program specifically, because um, there's no general education requirements and you have to have the prerequisites completed, everybody completes the same kind of prerequisite courses. And then in the program, you're only completing okay. the nursing you. courses. There's no additional courses. Okay. So uh, the accelerated program? Uh -huh. Well, the, I don't know. I can't speak to the traditional okay. BSN program. Um, it, 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 I would imagine that the more courses you complete, um, for that program ahead of time, you will, you won't have to take those courses at the university, but I don't, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not a, I don't, I'm not associated with that program. So I, I can't comment on their application process. Um, Kevin. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Um, I just had a really quick question. I had. I've taken four uh, general chemistry classes. One of them was completely a lab. Three of them was an intro to chemistry class, like a three-part series. Um, so it was a quarter school. And one of the, I guess, lecture-based classes doesn't really cover the four units. So my question is, would you guys average all three introductory lecture and the lab, or is it just one of the uh, uh, yeah. lectures you're, you're in the lab? Yeah, you're coming from one of the UCs, I have to imagine. Yes, sir. Um, yep. So <laughs> uh, typically the UCs all do some combination of like a 1A, a 1B, and a 1C. And then there's like a 1D, which is the lab, or a 1L, which is the lab. So what we'll take is one of the lectures and the lab up till we get to six quarter units. Um, and what we usually try to do is come up with the best combination that gives you the highest GPA. So um, if looking at all, you know, three of those quarter unit lectures and the labs, that ends up averaging out better for you than if we just take two, then that's what we'll do. But if we just all, if, if, if looking at only two and not looking at the other lecture course or just looking at the lecture in the lab works best for you, that's what we'll do. Okay, so perfect. Yeah, that was my second question. If you're gonna take the best out of, you know, any of the options. Yes. If it, 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 you know, again, if that's the case where you've taken multiple chemistries because of a quarter system or something like that, w once we get to six, that's, that's all we, that's all we look at. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Ju Hyun, Ju Hyun, Choi. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, thanks for having uh, this Zoom meeting. I really appreciate it. I have uh, three questions. Okay. And the first first question is, you said the total tuition of this course is uh, three um, $32,000. Um, does it apply to international students as well? The one benefit of us being not self-support, I mean, not state support, meaning we don't get any subsidization is that uh, tuition is the same for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're an in-state student, out-of-state student, international student, uh, a reptile. It's the same tuition. Okay, thank you. And also, sure. this, uh, the recommendation letter should be from medical field related or? It, that's a great question. It does not need to be. What I usually say to people is anyone but your mom, um, meaning no family, but it can be um, an academic recommendation. It can be from someone in the medical field. It can be a former colleague. It can be a former employer. Um, really what we're looking for is this is another opportunity for you to personalize your application for the committee and really somebody who knows you well, who could talk about why you might be a good fit as a nurse, why you would thrive in an accelerated program, what some of your leadership qualities might be or your potential for leadership, how you work in a group or a team, and then something about academics, but it doesn't have to be so-and-so was in my physiology course. It could be so-and-so 
was taking the prerequisites while we drove an ambulance together and they never were missed work or they never seemed stressed or they seemed to manage their load or I trained so-and-so as the scribe and, you know, they asked wonderful questions and they were really quick to pick things up. Um, so again, it doesn't have to be specifically academic, but yes, no, it doesn't have to be from the medical field either. Just anybody but family. Okay. And my last question is, does my GPA from my previous university affects my accept of acceptance? The committee does look at your undergrad GPA, but it is really, really lowly weighted. Um, your science prerequisite GPA is going to have much more of an impact on your application than your undergrad GPA. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I believe I'm at Olivia Lou. Hi. Hi. So you mentioned in the very beginning that there's a special program that if you graduate from a salary BSN, you can go directly to the NP, like MSN, for just one year? Yep. Okay, so in that case, uh, if I decide, like, to, after I graduate, I want to go out and work for two years, will I still be eligible to come back and do this one year? Oh, it's, it, the MP program is a two-year program, but what, what you can do... Um, from the ABSN program. So we used to have a master's program that that granted students a master's of nursing, and that took one year after the BSN coursework, but they didn't get an NP. Um, if you want to do the FMP program, you have the eligibility to go straight from the ABSN into the FMP, and mm -hmm. then it'll be additional two years of coursework to get your MP. Now, if you want to graduate from the ABSN program and go out in the world and work and come back, you're eligible to come back to for any of the MPs later. You don't you don't have to make that choice now, and you can get it from any institution. It doesn't have to be us. Oh, okay, that's uh good. Uh, so another question that um so I asked my um supervisor like um one of the doctor write me a like like a recommendation, but it's already in like um another format like. I used to apply at a private school and they gave me a like their recommendation letter format. So can I turn in their like recommendation letter to you guys, even though it's like in the other format? They have to sign it. They they have to send it. Yeah, um, they, they did. Yeah, they can yeah. But just the format is a little bit tricky. Like it's I in don't... other schools paper format. Yeah. Oh, well, so the 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 recommender has to send the letter of recommendation and mm -hmm. it's, an, it's electronic. So they can submit it however they want to submit it. Um, you oh, know, okay. yeah. You just have to send by them. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so essentially, Kirsten Cass will send them an email that says, mm -hmm. uh, Olivia has asked for a letter of recommendation for her upcoming application to Cal State LA. Um, please use the following link to submit and they click on the link and they upload, I think it's a word doc or a PDF. There's multiple formats they'll accept. Okay. So it doesn't matter how the, um, recommendation letter looks just, okay. And also, um, what is my question? No, I think I'm good. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, okay. It looks like. Um, Johanna Herrera. Yes. Hi. Thank you. Um, Hi. I have two quick questions. One of them: Will remote testing for teeth still be um accepted for the next summer, so twenty twenty five? Yeah. We're we're as long as ACI is offering it, we will continue to accept it. Okay. And my second question, I guess it's to piggyback off of the UC question that I think Kevin had previously. Um, oh. since the lecture that you consider and the lab that you guys consider. Those, since they may have separate grades, do you average those grades to be a 3.0 or do you look at them separately to be 3.0? No, no, no. We would combine the grades and it just depends on, the, they're weighted based on their units, right? So if the lecture course is a three unit course and the lab course is a one unit course, we don't directly average. We would calculate what the GPA for the three units and what the GPA for the lab course was. And then we would combine those and that's how you would get your great okay and the lecture and lab that you consider they can be from it's from the same series but different classes right you said yep yep okay, that's okay awesome. thank you so much sure uh heather mendoza you're back yes sorry my mic was not working but thank you for sorry. being patient 
Um, yeah, you're totally cool. <laughs> two quick things. So um, for the T's test, um, like you said, you could take it to the ninth, right? But um, I read on the um, the um, document that you can get online for applying to the program, and it says you have to print, mail, and and send it to the university. Um, so, I'll, sorry, uh, that's a yeah, that's a typo. Um, we moved okay. from we moved from a paper and pen application mm -hmm. to a digital application, and that we're still language continues to pop up that we're unaware of, but no, you just, you up, it says if you're uploading a transcript, there's a space on the nursing CAS um, application that is for your T-score and you just right. upload that document I showed you. Yep. Got it. Thank you. And then another quick one is um, transcripts, official transcripts. Is there um, a specific date that you would need to get them by? So is it by the ninth or is it like January 31st or, or um, official transcripts? Yes. It, it, it's helpful to have them sooner rather than later. Um, while the committee's reviewing all the applications after January 9th, if they don't have official transcripts, they will reach out to you. Um, okay. But they, but you would, the latest you could possibly submit them would be February 28th because the university requires them in order to grant you admission. So for the nursing casts, application the application committee at the school of nursing is willing to review applications with unofficial transcripts um, or pending official transcripts but the university will not admit you without official transcripts so you have to have those by feb 28 okay thank you sure uh katya luna yes good evening um so i had a quick question in regards to the recency um yes. i was wondering if that applies to all courses including the science courses or if or is it just for certain classes no we have no recency requirements so uh, um, anything you took at any point in time that was university level is fair game okay perfect and then in terms of the applications um they're usually around march right for the program you guys only accept one uh per year right we, we accept one per year sorry it took me a second to figure out um yes <laughs> No, 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 you're good. You're good. So yes. So we do essentially, um, timeline is you all turn in an application by January 9th. Application mm -hmm. committee reviews all applications in January for eligibility. Okay. End of January, early February, you'll get a letter from the College of Professional Global Education saying you're eligible to apply for the university. Here's the link for the Cal State apply um, thing. And you're going to submit official transcripts again to the university directly. And that process is pretty much a formality. While that is going on, the application committee is ranking, um, scoring and ranking every single eligible candidate's application. And then from that eligible candidate pool, they will invite 60 or so. Some years it's a little bit more, some years it's a little bit yes, less, but 60 or so eligible candidates to interview for the program. And those interviews start usually in early February and they run through um, the third week of March. And then that last week of March, I can't remember what the exact date is that we put in the procedure, but we will um, give admissions decisions to everyone um, on the same day in that last week of March. It's usually the last Friday in March. Um, and so, yeah, everybody will get an admissions de decision at that point in time. And again, the interview process will take place through um, that third week of March. Um, so what happens if we have taken like we were in a nursing program, but um, due to like the pandemic, it was like, I would say like I dropped the program um, due to some personal reasons. Um, do any of those courses count towards this program or would it affect me in terms of applying as well or being admitted to the program? It will not impact your application process. Okay. Um, you know, it might come up in your interview, um, mm -hmm. but it won't, it's not going to it won't make you ineligible. It won't be impacted. It's not going to be scored in your application. Um, and unfortunately, because of the way the board licenses individual schools, we cannot accept transfer credits from other nursing institutions because we have to verify all the hours that we submit for you. So um, we cannot accept transfer uh, transfer courses in nursing. If you did prerequisites for a previous nursing program, those are all eligible. It's just the actual nursing courses won't be transferred over. It doesn't, it won't hurt you. It won't impact you. You just won't get credit for them. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to verify. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, Edith. 
Hello? Yes. Hi, Edith. Hi. Um, I have a few questions. The first one is uh, withdrawals. Do they affect the application? So no, I withdrew. No? no, we don't consider we don't factor withdrawals into the into the process. Oh, OK. And you already spoke about the latest. We can take the T's. And oh, did you ever say what the average T score for those who are accepted is? I know you um, said it's a minimum of 70 percentile, but I, do you know? Yeah, the no, average? I, I don't know what the average score is. We I haven't run that data personally. Um, typically students. So, you know, definitely we have a lot of students who score in the 90th percentile or higher. Um, so, you know, I always encourage people to do as well as they can, but part of the reason why we dropped the, so it used to be 80th percentile or higher for our program. And part of the reason why we dropped it to the 70th percentile, um, is we saw over the last two cycles that we had some really competitive applicants who ended up scoring 79th percentile on the T's test. And those applicants likely would have been interviewed and, possibly ad admitted into the program. So we did that intentionally to try to give more wiggle room and to get, um, to have more inclusivity in, in the application process. So, you know, just because your T-score is not 90th or above doesn't mean you're not competitive, um, but we do see a lot of 90th percentile or above. Okay. And um, another question was about the, um, the cast that you guys use. So, I have transcripts from Cal State Long Beach and Long Beach community. And yep. when I need to send my official transcript, we use the um, the parchment website. And so I know you said we have to update update it into the other nursing website that you guys are that you guys use. But I was wondering, like, do I send it from parchment into CAS and then CAS sends it to you guys, or how does it work? So CAS essentially is a repository for for your application and your transcripts. So once you log into CAS, they will give you instructions on how to upload the official transcripts or use parchment to send the transcripts to them. And then once they're in CAS, we can see them. Um, the idea behind that is if you are applying to like multiple nursing programs, you only actually have to submit one set of transcripts to CAS and then they push those transcripts out to the various programs you're applying to. Okay, yeah, because I before I read any of that, um, I had already sent my official transcript uh, through parchment, but I, I guess I have to resend it, right? If you sent it to the university? Right, I, I sent it to the university already. Um, you might be able to, uh, it's, it's possible that when that application window opens up in February, you may be able to um, let the university know that you previously submitted transcripts and they may be able to use those transcripts for that window. Um, but, per, but I personally don't have access. The, the, you will have to resubmit app transcripts to nursing CAS for the initial nursing school application. Okay. Yeah, no, I was assuming I had to, because I'm currently um, finishing up my chemistry class, which ends in December. And I'm not sure if um, I would have yeah, to update yeah, it anyways. And you'll need to anyway. So you'll wait, wait for, wait to get that chemistry class on there. Okay. And, and I think I had one more question. Oh, and you, you just mentioned that for our uh, two page personal statement, uh, we should just talk about our personal lives just to, and how it ties into nursing so we could show them like who we are. Yeah. I mean, essentially it's a two page, it's a two page essay that is meant to give you the opportunity to kind of talk about yourself beyond just the grades that are there on the paper. Um, it's, it intentionally doesn't have a prompt to give people a lot of wiggle room as to what they're talking about. Obviously I would recommend, you know, what the candidate, what, you know, what the, what the committee is trying to figure out is who will be the best candidates for this nursing program, right? So you should definitely explain why you think you would be a good candidate. And that may be telling your story that may be telling your goals that may, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to kind of sell yourself as a candidate, but that's essentially what that is there for. Um, you know, and then obviously, you know, beyond just whatever you decide to talk about, you know, making sure that it's a polished essay. So, you know, that they can see that you're able to compose thoughts and that you can put things together and, 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 and all of that also factors in. Okay. Thank you. That That's just, all the questions I had. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Jezreel.
or Jezreel. Hi. Hi. Um, so you'll see my question in our chat. So just ignore it if you ever go through that. But um, I had to do that after this. So I will <laughs> try to um, but basically, my question was, um, does the program have any sort of like um, classes or emphasis on resume building for obviously after the program? And um, with that being said, um, on that same note, are there any like networks or connections that alumni can use to um, like bolster job applications? Um, that's a great question. So uh, in that last summer, that transition to practice seminar um, does provide like they talk about resumes, they talk about interviews, they talk about you know, what to look for in your post BSN experience, because, you know, nursing kind of nowadays works a lot like um, doctors or medical training, where a lot of hospitals want you to do what they call a new grad residency program. And some of those come with, you know, pretty extensive application processes behind, beyond just a normal job application. Um, and um, so we talked to you a little bit about what that transition looks like, um, and all that. So that that all happens in that summer. Um, and then there are several opportunities to network within the program. Um, there is an alumni association um, that you can that you can be a part of. Um, and then in the program itself, we do have relationships with certain sites. So there are um, opportunity individual sites do come out and talk to our students and and provide some information about kind of postgraduate stuff. Okay, cool. Um, thank you. And then, um, I guess like within the program, are there any like organizations um, that we can join while we're in the program? Sure. Uh, we have a student nursing association on campus. We also have a chapter of Alpha Tau Delta, the um, nursing fraternity, and it's a professional fraternity. Um, so it's not, it's, it's, it's co-ed. Um, those are the two big organizations on campus. Um, and then after the program, you become eligible for a membership in Sigma Theta Tau, which is the Nursing Honor Society, assuming that your your grade your GPA is high enough. But most of the ABSN students end up getting offered um, uh, membership in that um, organization as well. Okay, that's really nice. Um, I think that's all my questions for now. Absolutely. Um, okay. I think I've got two more that haven't asked that I'm going to go through the chat and then I'll go back to everybody whose hand is up that I previously um, talked to. Um, let's see. Kara Green. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for your time. I just had a really sure. quick question. Yeah. Um, for this ABSM program, do you guys accept faculty and staff dependent fee waivers? Like if uh we have uh, if, we're, if we are a dependent of someone who works at a CSU, do you guys accept those fee waivers? I don't know. Um, I would either have you email myself and I can ask Paige um, about that or Tom Lau, our financial advisor for the program, would be able to answer that question. I do not know if... Um, see uh, let me put let me put tom's email in the in the chat for you um okay. and i would recommend emailing tom lau who is our financial aid advisor for the program he would know how to answer that question and i'm i apologize i'm just i'm i am not the person no problem thank you so much i'll get that sure. email yeah, thank you for that, that. Right now, T. Wow. Well, okay. All right. Yeah. So his name is Tom Lau, and his email is in the Zoom chat right now. And he's the financial aid advisor for the nursing programs at um, that are administered through the College of Professional and Global Education. He can definitely answer that question. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Have a good night. Absolutely. You too, Kara. Um, See Cynthia Frausto. Hi, yes. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, okay. my first question is just based on like retention rate. So, like, 
if a student were to be like struggling, um, are there like additional resources that are provided throughout the like throughout the program or um, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, first off, the ABSN program is small. Um, we are, a, you know, a cohort of 30. Um, it has a very family environment within that cohort. Um, so, you know, typically if somebody were struggling, it would start with, you know, a one-on-one -on -one advisement meeting, um, either with the individual instructor for that course or clinical or with myself um, to kind of discuss what challenges the students were having, um, what resources are available, you know, on campus or that we could make available through the School of Nursing. Um, our students are eligible for um, Office of Students with Disabilities. So if there are accommodations that students need, they are eligible for those through the program. But really, that's that that would be the process. And, and we're committed to student success. Um, there's such a limited number of spaces available. And I, for one, am very conscious of the fact that um, there are so many more eligible and qualified and wonderful people who want to be nurses than than we or any program has space for. And so when we admit someone, we really want them to be successful um, because it's a spot that somebody else could have if they're not. So um, we, we try as hard as possible to make people successful. Um, there are some resources, but it would really depend on what that individual candidate needed. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you so much. Um... My other question was, if I retook a course um, and they were both passing grades, would my grade average out or would only the first passing grade be considered? Like you took two courses and both of them were at a B or better? Right. So I took chemistry at a UC and I got a B minus in my lab. So I assumed that it wasn't going to be accepted. But now after your discussion, I... I'm assuming that it might be accepted because it averages out to a B minus with my general chemistry course. Um, so, but now I'm also taking a chemistry with lab at a CC and I'm assuming I'm gonna get an A. So I'm just like, my question is whether the no, no, A will be the I, one that I matters. got you. Um, like I, I think I was Kevin who I was talking about this, but like once, you, once you're eligible, right? So once you are able to demonstrate that you've got a B or better, either by average or whatever, um, mm -hmm. and we attempt to get you the highest score possible. So if because you went to a UC and you had the B minus in chemistry, but they were all different quarters, then I could only consider the community college one and say that none of the UCs met the individual um, unit requirements. Okay. But, yeah. So essentially we will attempt to take the highest score possible. Okay, awesome. So I'll strive for that A. <laughs> Sorry for that A. Okay, thank uh, you. And uh, Carla Hernandez, I think is the last uh, hand raised question I'm going to take. Then I'm going to do the chat and then I'll go back to the hand raised after that. Okay, so I just had a question now regarding tuition. So I know you provided okay. Tom's email. Um, so when it comes to tuition, do you happen to know, not necessarily specifically, but is there like loans that that the school has available for you or would you have to get a private lender yourself or? Sure, that's a great question. So for the program, we are eligible for federal financial aid. Um, there is a lifetime limit for undergraduate federal financial aid, meaning loans that you can take out through the federal government. I believe it's around $55,000. If you used all of that federal financial aid during your initial undergraduate and you have not yet repaid it back. If you've repaid it back, it becomes available to you again. But if you've not yet repaid it back, then your primary funding option would either be individual finances or private loans. There are some scholarships that are available, specifically the, the HRSA Health Corp Scholarship, which Tom tends to send our um, accepted students information about. The problem for ABSN students is that most nursing scholarships want to see at least a year's worth of nursing coursework and grades before you're eligible for a scholarship. But by the time you become eligible for a scholarship, you're already already graduating from the program. So um, there you, you can take out federal loans and grants. So if you are eligible for a Pell Grant or um, a subsidized or unsubsidized, you can take out, I believe, up to $25,000 worth of federal loans for our program. And then the remainder would need to be some additional financing source, which is what Tom does. Tom works with our students to identify whatever funding sources make the most sense for them. Right. So 
basically, if you never took out loans during your undergrad, then you'll most likely be able to get loans through the federal funding, right? Yep. And you just fill out the FAFSA, fill out the FAFSA. Okay. Even if you, it's just to provide them the information, right? Yep, exactly. And because you want to submit a FAFSA for, you want to submit a FAFSA for 23, 24 and 24, 25, because you are eligible for a little bit of money in the summer too. Okay. But Tom will go over all of that with you. Tom, Tom will walk you through that process. Okay. Once, if it happens to get to that point, got it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can obviously ask him questions, but yeah, once you're, once you're admitted to the program, Tom is there to figure out how to pay for the program with you. Got it. But he won't pay for it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, all right. Let me quickly go through um, the chat and then I'll jump back to the uh, questions that are still up there. Um, does the application committee review the application as a whole? They do. They do. Um, so they look at, they try to look at the individual components and then look at what those components add up to. Um, for science courses, if the lectures and labs are graded separately, are those averaged out? I think I covered that. Uh, organic chemistry cannot replace general chemistry. Um, can we complete critical thinking while applying? You're going, yes, you're going to, um, I talked to Lindsay about that. She's going to email me. Do prerequisites expire? They do not. There is no recency requirements. Um, do certain parts of the application weigh more than others? Does GPA weigh more than the personal statement, for example? Um, we don't disclose our specific um, uh, our rubric because for the most part, we try to create a an opportunity um, for candidates to get evaluated holistically, which means there is some subjective evaluation in the letters of recommendation and the essays. So it's hard to, um, we don't disclose the specific rubric, um, but they all are weighted pretty equally between the five big components that they look at, which are science prerequisite GPA, T-score, uh, letters of recommendation, personal ethic, and health and healthcare experience. Um, every every course needs to be taken. Every science course needs to be taken with the lab. Uh, when is the latest we should take the T's? You have to be able to submit a transcript by January 9th. So whatever whatever time frame gets you that. Um, like I said, I believe you can get a transcript within minutes to hours after completing the T's. But I would follow up with ATI before making that my plan. Um, do any of this hospitals allow exemptions for students of some of the vaccinations? I know that hospital employees are or have gotten exceptions. Um, they, they currently do. They currently, um, so for vaccines, currently some hospitals will allow for exemptions. Um, all healthcare workers were required by the state of California to be vaccinated. Um, during the heat of the pandemic. So most hospitals still require you to have gotten the COVID and COVID boosters. Um, the university no longer requires it. Um, but again, it's individual hospitals and we don't control which hospitals we use semester to semester. Um, and so there's no guarantee if you require a vaccine exception um, that you can get it. And even if hospitals are granting that exemption, to their employees, they may not be granting it to students. So um, all I can say about vaccines is that if you do um, require an exception, whether it be because you do not want to get the vaccine or you cannot get the vaccine, um, it it does increase the likelihood that you will delay your progress through the program or your progress through the program will be delayed. And so um, unfortunately, we just we cannot control the hospital partners. Uh, how many applications do you typically receive? 200 to 250 applications. What's the average GPA and T score? Um, I do not have that data. Um, what is the process for petitioning class equivalency? We kind of talked about that. Um, you do not apply to this school by the end of this month. Um, the Cal State apply cycle that's currently going on is for the traditional BSN program, not the ABSN. So right now, your only application you're submitting is on nursing CAS. Um, by when must we have all the application done? January 9th. Where will the recorded Zoom be posted? It's posted on the uh, ABSN website under information session. Uh, does the program, oh, we talked about that. How early in advance do we need to submit the T-scores? Um, 
you just submit them with your nursing CS application. So by um, January 9th. Um, this question is if you've got multiple chem courses, but they don't have enough units to meet the quarter units. Um, um, Janet, I would recommend emailing me directly with that question and I can take a look at your prerequisites um, for you because I, I don't know how to answer that in a generalized fashion. I have to see the courses to tell you what makes the most sense. Um, if you took your TEAS in March of 2023, unfortunately you would have to take it again because it has to be taken uh, June 23rd or later. Um, let's see. If you have a previous balance of 6,000, then you should be good for $49,000 worth of federal loans. Um, you don't need to be completely paid off. It's my understanding is it's a rolling system. So if they're if they're started later in the year, they will go until um, I mean, like if you've paid off, you know, if you if you took out twenty five thousand and you'd still have twenty five thousand available to you. But if you pay off twelve thousand, then that goes right back into that bank. And now you have thirty seven thousand available. Um, the program does only want only start once a year. So we admit 30 students every summer. Um, externships will be considered for healthcare experience. Uh, what makes applicants 3.0 and below stand out um, to the application committee? What makes the lower GPA acceptable? So a 3.0 um, or less as an undergrad in your undergrad, the reason why it's a preferred and not a required is because some of our candidates took their undergrad coursework 20, 25 years ago. And we try to acknowledge that individuals can grow and that they can grow um, remarkably, right? So that undergrad GPA doesn't represent who you are as a student. That's why we look at the most recent 60 semester units. That's to try to give people an opportunity to demonstrate that they've improved academically. Um, if you had a lower GPA when you were in, um, in your undergrad, a lot of times people will mention it in their essay. Um, and really what makes a candidate maybe with not super high academic marks stand out it is a clear commitment to the profession of nursing, right? So if you, you know, got all B's in your sciences and you scored, you know, just above the 70th percentile in the T score, but, you know, you've been an EMT for six years or a CNA for multiple years, or you clearly, you know, you've done a lot of medical mission work or a lot of volunteer work, or you clearly demonstrate a commitment to this profession and, towards the caring sciences, um, then then oftentimes the application committee will will look at that and that will help. Um, uh, yes, last question was about when to take the uh, TS. Yes, you do need to retake it if you took it in March 23rd. It won't count against you. It won't count for you. We just have to have in, in because of eligibility requirements and because of university requirements, it has to be within a year of you being admitted. So it has to be June, 2023. Uh, Sandra, did you have another question or you just got your hand up? Hello? Yes. Hi, Sandra. Oh, did did um, you have another question? Oh yeah, I was gonna ask, Um. So um, there are postbacks and things like that. Are those worth it? Because I know they take time and they're very expensive. Um, if we do have a low GPA, should we just focus on other aspects? Or do yeah. postbacks, are they impressive to you guys? Or I'm not sure. No, I would. I, so if your undergrad GPA was low, um, as long as you've got a 3.0 or better, better for the last 60, I would focus on good science prerequisites, good T-score, killer essay, healthcare experience. The, 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 the overall GPA is weighted very low in the, in the, in the overall app. Thank it's you. Not, it's not worth doing a whole post back for it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Paul said, how many times can we reapply? You can reapply as many times as you like. We'd run one cycle every year. I have students in the current cohort 
One applied twice and got in on her second time. One applied three times, got in on her third time. Um, are there any in-person proctoring institutions near the LA area? When I go to ATI, most of the proctoring locations are in Bay Area, San Diego. I thought there were. Um, I, I think you can take them at a lot of different locations. So I would imagine that there are in-person proctoring within ATI, uh, LA, but I'm not, I, I'm not affiliated with a ATI. So you, that question would have to go to them. Uh, yes, hospital volunteer work. We, we There's no recency on that. So if you did it seven years ago, we will still look at it. So include any ho hospital patient care, volunteer research, presentations, uh, healthcare related teaching or education, medical missions, uh, any healthcare experience you've got, put it on your resume. Um, Shelby, do you have any more questions? Yeah, uh, I finished the uh, CNN training program. I wonder if I passed the CNN exam and get my uh, license. Does it count as my healthcare experience? It does count as, as healthcare experience. So if you've got a CNA, an EMT, or an MA license, we will consider that as some healthcare experience. Yeah, uh, um, by the way, the credit for, uh the science probably will be get after the January 9. So in that case, it don't count as my health uh, care experience because if I I will um, uh, take the exam on December 25, and it will be probably take a few weeks to get my qualification. You can list the training on your resume and we can give you credit for the training. And then yeah. you can email me off. You can email me after the fact if you get your license and I can upload it into the Nursing Cast website for you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for today. Um yeah, absolutely. Uh community health uh, absolutely counts towards healthcare experience. It does not have to be inpatient. If you're doing like home care, um, community-based, population based, you are a caregiver, that's uh definitely works. Um, Shelby, I answered your question. Ruth, if you got waitlisted during one application period, would that increase a, a following application probability of acceptance? It doesn't necessarily, but if you got waitlisted, it really does mean you were very close and that the application committee um, very much considered your application. Um, so I would say you were likely a very strong candidate. Um, and, you know, I would review your application process. Obviously, you can't change the grades. You might be able to fix the T-score since you get a new T-score this time. Um, you know, letters of recommendation, make sure they're strong and for people who know you well and make sure your essay is strong. Um, and 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 you definitely, people who have applied multiple times do get in. Okay. Um, that's all of the questions in the chat. Um, does anybody else have any questions before um, I sign off? Stella, I see uh, Stella Stavro. Yes, hi, sorry, I have a last minute question. Um, so right. my background is primarily in psychology. I've done a lot of experience um, more in that field. I've done like, uh, I volunteered for a suicide hotline and I've worked in outpatient mental health centers. Does that kind of count towards healthcare it, experience? It or I'm than, doing it, yeah. Yeah, it more than kind of counts. Um, it does count. Um, you know, obviously put all of that on a resume. I tell people if you feel like it's healthcare experience, put it on your resume and highlight it under a healthcare experience section. And we again, just like with the grades, we try to give you credit for stuff. Um, so yes, if you did a lot of counseling, if you did health-related teaching. As far as that goes, if you did, you know, kind of teledoc type appointments, but focused on like um, mental health, absolutely that counts. Okay, amazing. Thank you. Sure. Um. All right. I don't see any more questions. I'm gonna do it going once, going twice. Sold to ending the ABSN info session for November. Um, if you all are people who think of this period of time as being celebratory or a holiday, I hope you enjoy yourself. Um, thank you for taking the time to sit with 
uh, me and discuss the ABSN program here at Cal State LA. I'm so excited to have all of you joining the nursing profession shortly, whether it be with us or another institution. Um, remember, there are many paths to get into nursing and we need you all. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we will talk to you soon, hopefully.